right, so we got us a residential unit here that wasn't running, and now it is, he said, because you're gonna think I'm crazy. So, now we gotta play detective, because it does feel like it's working. Let's go ahead and start poking in here and see what we can find out. Let's check her contactor, let's check her capacitor. Looks like the coil's clean. He said the filter's brand new. So we're getting all the obvious things. Suction's nice and cold, which for the year of this thing, which is the 2011, and it's a three-ton unit. Let's uh, let's check. There could be some bugs in the contactor too. So let's, let's start narrowing things down. This is electrical, as always. My normal disclaimer: Do not play in here. This will shock the crap out of you and may kill you. So don't do it. Looking at it. Everything seems pretty tight. It's, uh... Yeah. Hear the something tank over there doing its thing. Kind of got a whine noise to it. Make sure this thing's dead. Let's check this capacitor out, see where we're at. It's very hot. It's kind of warm. All right, let's see what we've got here. 43 microfarad, it's rated for 45. Jumping over to the fan, 3.9. It's rated for five, so it's definitely out on that one. So 45 and we're at 40, 43. So I do the math on it. Either way, it's getting weak. I want it replaced. Contactor. Yeah, let's see what we got. It's kind of pitted. What I do on a case like this, I, I just replace both things. They're cheap items. We don't rate people for them. So um, both items need uh, should be replaced, my feeling. I like to have a, a contactor that has a uh, bug shield on it. Uh, we're out here in the country. So as you can see, I mean, you got fields everywhere. So uh, bugs tend to be out here a little more than probably what's in town. Wig, uh, wigwams or whatever you call them, they tend to get in there. You can see the spiders been in here and stuff. So um, let's go ahead and get them a capacitor on there and the, capa and the uh, contactor, and then we'll check refrigerant level. Coil looks like it's clean. Sometimes that can be deceiving. I'm gonna go talk to him. Everything's running right now. So um, I did see a couple things that are a little bit concerning. The contactor, which is the thing that switches on and off and makes it run. Um, it's a little pitted, which usually means it could eventually have problems making contact. I like to use one that has a bug shield in it, which kind of protects you from that possibility. Sometimes a bug will get in there, they'll get caught, and then you turn it off and then it, it releases them, and then they walk away like a little criminal, and, and you know, and then you have no clue what caused it. Uh, the capacitor, which is just a device that makes the compressor and the fan run, um, they're a little bit weak. So I'd like to change those. Neither one of them are that expensive, so I'd like to change both of those. And then uh, I still need to check the refrigerant yet. So Go ahead. That, that's where I was at. When it was acting up, was the outside unit running? Yeah. It was running? It was, it, it was putting out uh, like halfway. Seems well, slow? Not even halfway cool there. It was putting out. It was a little cool, but it wasn't... On the inside or outside? Inside, here. Inside. So you can feel a little sump. All right, so we've got total line, which is exact OEM, even though it, my phone died. So we're going to have to uh, record with the GoPro. We're able to get in here pretty easy now, thanks to the uh, GoPro sticking right there on the disconnect box. Unfortunately, this capacitor, like I said, is a little bit bigger. A behemoth. Probably just use the strap. And it's in place. It's all good there. Guess we could probably check it beforehand. Why not? Let's let's be good citizens here and check it and see what we got. Never know the place that was built at may have been cracking out. 45.2 and 5.0. So 
So we know that it's good. Like I said, power's off completely and it's been verified. I do not like stranded wire underneath these contactors. The reason why we use the one we use is because it actually has lugs. One leg is constantly hot, which, see my new Kleins? Got the strippers built into them, pretty slick. Down in my tool description down below, I will, uh, if you click on that link down there, everything you see in my videos um, uh, is listed down there. And then if it's not, then you got a link to uh, anything in Amazon signs that kind of stuff. Helps support the channel without having to spend any money because I know everybody out there loves to spend money. There we go. Kind of snags it a little bit. I don't know if I like that part though. They're not quite as, I don't know, I don't know if I like them as well as regular strippers. But what we're going to do, since that's a one pull, we're going to put the yellow wire for the compressor on the bottom with the power wire coming in and that way it's the same as single pull what they do is to try to keep that compressor warm supposedly whatever agree disagree whatever let's uh restrip that there we go yeah it's i think with these here it kind of seems like you got to uh crimp down or strip down and then pull let up a little bit it seems like it does less damage to the wire that way for whatever reason these wire ties are pretty slick they got a hole already drilled in them and it's bigger width wise than what most of them are so we should be able to use that same screw So that's not going anywhere. I mean, yeah, it's not as strong as the metal. A lot better than these idiots that leave it in a box. Basically, we're taking care of present preventative maintenance type items. Those are taken care of. Got all of our wires out of the way of everything. Everything's pretty tight. Let's check and see what our compressor startup amps is. Inrush. So we got you here. Boom. 81, pulling 8.4, that was just the compressor. So then we check our fan, fan's right at 1.3, which it's rated for, 1.4. So fan motor's in the ballpark range. Okay, well, let's watch it for a bit here and see if we can find out what's causing its issue. blinking so they should be showing up. I don't know what the deal is here. It's kind of ticking me off. Let's go into the deal piece. Man, I don't know what's going on. Either one of them's working. Alright, so we're starting the old junk note nine here. It is not finding them. I wonder what the hell's going on with my phone. Well I might have to go grab the old gauges. This is the reason why I like gauges. Gee whiz, turn them all off, what a joke. <laughs> 50 degree evaporator, 97 degree outdoor. I think it's probably at least 85 degrees out here, if not 87. Okay, well it's 90 out here. So to me it looks like we're gonna be low. We got a 10 degree superheat and a 1.5 subcooling. So now we need to find out what's our metering device. Are we a TXV or are we a orifice? Now what's kind of crazy is we're only running five degrees over ambient on our discharge, which seems a little low. Hello? Can I come in? Yeah, come in. <laughs> I want to check the furnace real quick. Well, it looks to me like it's a TXD. Yep, TXD right there. Oh, 
All right, so it's obviously a little bit low. And that's probably one of the end coils, so it's probably leaking. Go ahead and get it recharged, and then we can always give them the option to look for a leak, which no one really likes the solution once you find the leak. Gotta find a leak, gotta find a leak. Okay, you need to replace the coil. Oh no, I don't wanna do that. Lucky, lucky. Had to label it, because it's brown. All right. Wow, indoor subfilling 16. I'm going to write inside the machine what the information is because it won't be long, it's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Add a little bit to it and see where we can get this at. There was 16 on this big turd. TXV was doing its job as best it could, it was holding the uh, superheat there. So we're at 90, now we have about 101, which is gonna climb up. Old 410A loves to take forever to build up its pressure. I don't know how many times I've been on calls where guys rushed it in and overcharged it. It's one of the weirdest refrigerants because it, it always seems to, I don't know, it, it stays low, then all of a sudden, kabam, it just expands and just goes nuts compared to the other refrigerants. I don't have that problem with really anything else before 10A. Just very temperamental. So we're at nine degrees subcooling, no superheat at all, which is real wonderful. Which wouldn't surprise me if I got a TXV, it's probably going bad, but we'll have to give it a little time to get satisfied. There the TXV's trying to recover. Look at it there, it's cutting back. That's gonna drive that subcooling up. Definitely the refrigerant charge was uh, off, but, and today was kind of a warm day, so that could have been the majority of the issue. Super Eat's still coming up. That's good. I had a bunch of them out there that Super Eat was always low on them. Makes you wonder if they cooled the bulb when they were brazing it in or if they just roasted it. So now we're running 15 degrees over ambient. We finally got our 15.6, we're just almost 16 degrees subcooling. Superheat's diddle dinking down there in the three degree land. We're gonna give it a while to situate, but we're looking a little more in line with where things should be at. Evaporator's running 50, 105 on the condensing, so, so far so good, as long as that superheat decides to come back up where it needs to come to. Went ahead and wrote the uh, subcooling, the pounds of refrigerant, Product number, serial number, all that inside there, so they'll have it for later. Our superheat's fluctuating, four and a half to five area. Subcooling's around 17 and a half, so I'm a degree or two over. Not a humongo deal. Um, and watch it for a little bit. Coil looks really, really clean. Um, usually I like to wash it out, but unfortunately, there's no freaking water spigots anywhere around here to be found. So it ain't the measure quick app. It must be my probes are acting stupid because it's working with my manifold here. So we're at a 16 with a five degree superheat. It's slowly stabilizing out. Everything's happy-go-lucky there. Let's go inside and see what our temperature drop is. Um, definitely was about a pound and a half low. So don't know if that's enough to really kill it, but definitely wasn't right. So it got jealous, and now the freaking thing is working. Um, not sure why it's now working. Beats me. How about 77 degrees here? Oh yeah. It says 77 coming in, we're already at 58 and dropping, so we're looking pretty good. We got a 20 degree drop. We'll close that back up. So that's going to wrap that one up there. Basically, we've got a system that's low on refrigerant, most likely leaking from a carry corrosion. It's not in warranty. The cost of the refrigerant is nowhere near that, so it's just obviously smarter just to add a little bit of refrigerant to it. It's not been leaking out very quickly. I don't think he's had to have service very often. Coils were clean. Contactor's never a bad idea to replace because, you know, the bug shield on there and just the pitting and stuff like that, you can have coils failing. When a system's running like that, all you can do is ask the questions, which is what I, I did there, and that's the reason why I showed it in the video. You know, when did it do it? Which part was running? And you gotta be specific, because, you know, they'll say, yeah, it was running, but they, don't, they, they, don't, they may not be talking about the outside unit. They're just talking about the inside unit. So you gotta make sure you ask them 
which area was running? Was it just the inside? Was the outside? Did it feel like it was hot? Did it feel like it was cold? Did you see any sweating on the lines? You know, you can ask a lot of questions and maybe they'll know, maybe they won't. What are you out if they don't? You know, if you didn't ask, you're, you might be going on the wrong rabbit trail for nothing. A system that's running, uh, when you get there, is definitely a pain in the butt sometimes. But, you know, obviously we found it low on refrigerant, so we know that didn't help it a whole lot, especially that we're, you know, at 90 degrees today, so it's a little warmer. That's a mobile home, so it gets hot fast in those uh, things, so it doesn't take long and it don't take much to put it under. Uh, three tons of cooling is what that was, and usually that's a bare bone minimum. The outdoor coil was clean, everything looked good on that. You know, the capacitor was weak. Um, what, was it ready to fail in the next day or two? No, but he's paying you to be out there and he's wanting it fixed, so why not take care of it while you're there? If you guys enjoyed the video and you know what to do, hit the thumbs up button, check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Till next time, later.